Hi guys, as promised, now we at Chemistry at your fingertips are back with our revision sessions. Okay, so today being the first revision session, I would like to tell you how exactly this is going to go about, right? So most of you uh, might be struggling with few concepts in organic chemistry, physical as well as inorganic, okay? And they are the ones which are most frequently asked. So in this set of revision series, we are going to make some very short videos regarding those questions wherein you might be struggling a lot are the questions you can say which are very much important from the examination point of view. So here we have our first revision series, HSC Organic Chemistry Revision Tips for the chapter Halogen Derivatives of Alkenes and this is going to be the part one wherein I'm going to discuss SN1 and SN2 reactions. Okay, so let's have a look. So the topic, as I said, it's going to be SN1, SN2, nucleophilic substitution, both unimolecular and bimolecular reaction. Okay, so you already might be aware of what exactly is a nucleophilic substitution. Okay, so uh, let's say if you have a carbon over here, now this carbon is connected, like there are four bonds on this particular carbon, right? So if you could see here, uh, let's say if this is the leaving group, maybe the BR. Okay, let me just uh, make it a little bit more clear. So now plus, uh, let's say if you have the incoming nucleophile, which could be which could be something like NU minus. So what exactly is the substitution? This BR is going to be substituted by NU, right? So this is going to give us the substituted product, right? So uh, what exactly could be the mechanism and these things that you have already studied? So this revision series is just going to give you a clear cut idea as well as a very small video on just quick revision, right? So let's have a look. Okay, so we have this general nucleophilic substitution reaction. Okay, so if you could see here, this is the incoming nucleophile and this is the leaving group. This leaving group could be any halide or it could be anything that is going to stabilize the negative charge when it leaves, right? So basically, if you could see here, the nucleophile has taken the place of the leaving group. Now I have shown it in an opposite manner and by now you already might be knowing what exactly happens. There are two things that come into picture that is retention and inversion, okay? This is just the basic thing which you have already studied. Now let's move ahead with our SN1 and SN2. Okay, so let's talk about SN2 reaction. You already know this is nothing but a bimolecular reaction, second order reaction, right? So if you could see here, this is nothing but the substrate and the nucleophile is going to attack from behind. Why? If you could see here, the leaving group itself has a negative charge, let's say if it is Br minus, and if the nucleophile itself has a negative charge, then there is going to be repulsion between the nucleophile as well as the leaving group. So the forward approach or the front side approach of the nucleophile would not be there. So in this case, the nucleophile is going to attack from behind. Exactly, if you could see here, side opposite to the leaving group. So when the nucleophile is going to attack, it's going to give us a concerted step. So what exactly do you mean by concerted step? Concerted mechanism or concerted step is nothing but a highly unstable state in which bond formation and bond breaking takes place simultaneously, okay? So you already know this is nothing but the bond formation and this is nothing but the bond breaking, right? So in this case, the bond formation and bond breaking is going to take place simultaneously. Now, if you could see here, the leaving group has already departed. So this is going to be the slow step, which is the rate determining step. And this is going to be the fast step, right? So you already know about this. So when I talk about the slow step, this is nothing but the rate determining step, right? So if you could see here in this case, both the nucleophile and the substrate is involved. So the order of the reaction is going to be two that you already might be knowing. So you might have done a lot of kinetics of these particular reactions, right? So in this case, if you could see here, a leaving group is on this side, on one side, and the nucleophile appears on the other side. So this is called as 100% inversion, okay? So it's pretty much simple. So this is nothing but the 100% inversion. 
so that you have already got right so this is nothing but the sn2 reaction a very brief thing what are the things that are that you are supposed to understand this is called as 100% inversion discovered by dr walden so this is also called as walden inversion so i'll write it here so this is also called as walden inversion okay so this was about the sn2 reaction now let's move ahead with our next series that is basically the sn1 reaction okay now you have this sn1 reaction most frequently asked in the exam because it has a lot of things that you have to look upon so if you could see here this is nothing but a carbon which is attached to three alkyl group pretty much crowded right and leaving group is there now the most important thing is that this leaving group should be substituted by the nucleophile right so nucleophile cannot approach from the front side because of repulsion between the leaving group as well as the nucleophile now it cannot approach from the back side because of steric hindrance right so this steric hindrance or the steric factor is going to play a very important role now if you could see here this if the leaving group leaves with the electron pair then a carbocation would be generated so this mechanism is basically a carbocation mechanism initially since the leaving group is more electron withdrawing in nature and electron negative it's going to pull the electron pair towards itself now this carbon is going to get partially positive charge right so if you could see here this was a tetrahedral carbon with 109 degree 28 minute or 109.5 degree bond angle now if you could see here here the bond angle has changed to 120 degree so now there is now more space for the nucleophile to attack so there are two possibilities it could be from the back side right and it could be from the front side so it could be from the front front side means same side as the leaving group so in this case you get 50 percent inversion and 50 percent retention now this basically gives rise to an optically inactive mixture which is called as racemic mixture okay so in this case basically the racemization occurs right so this is basically the feature of sn1 mechanism now to summarize it is steric dependent nucleophile cannot attack from the front as well as from the back it follows a carbocation mechanism because a tertiary carbocation is more stable normally happens in the case of branch substrates okay so let's say if you have some unbranched or the linear substrates of alkyl halide that would prefer for SN2 and highly branched or sterically hindered alkyl halides would prefer SN1 reaction okay so if you could see here this is nothing but the slow step which is rate determining step and there is no nucleophile so the order of the reaction is equal to 1 right so whether you increase the concentration of nucleophile to 10 times 100 times or 1000 times it's definitely not going to affect the rate of this reaction okay so the important terms that you should remember is that you get 50 percent inversion 50 percent retention it follows a carbocation mechanism right and the geometry of this carbocation is planar with a bond angle 120 degree okay so this was just a very short overview of sn1 reaction now let's move ahead okay so let's do the comparison now this is pretty much simple you already might be knowing i have already discussed this sn1 is unimolecular with carbocation mechanism bimolecular with concerted that means the bond formation and bond breaking takes place simultaneously now this depends on carbocation stability and this is dependent on the steric factor right and this is shown by tertiary alkyl halide this is shown by primary and SN1 reaction, you need a weak nucleophile. In this case, you need a strong nucleophile. Polar protic solvents are going to help because they are going to stabilize the carbocation over here, right? So it is it should be remembered polar protic. Here, polar aprotic solvents or no solvent, right? Here you have retention and inversion. Here you have only inversion, right? So this is just a comparative chart, and that's already there in your state board textbook as well. Right? So this was just about this very short revision session. I hope that you might have found this useful. Okay, now I would like to give further details about the upcoming sessions, right? So let's have a look what exactly are we going to do next. In the upcoming session, which is going to be uh, posted in the few days, 
we are going to study about the important chemical reactions basically a reaction chart that you might have to memorize or you might be knowing it very well just for a quick revision and then we are going to study the reactivity of alkyl halide and aryl halide towards different reactions maybe electrophilic and nucleophilic substitution okay so stay tuned to more videos and i hope you have enjoyed the session with me if you like the session please hit the like button and any sort of comments are most welcome thank you very much and good luck all of you